Hello, my dear friends. How is it going? I'm Ari Ferger, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about this very recent finding of a bracteate bearing the earliest reference to the god Odin. Although uh, I'm not going to focus too much uh, on details concerning this beautiful finding, and that will probably be the subject for a later video, perhaps. The, uh, the truth is that not only I am obviously excited with this new finding and I want to share this with you, this kind of information, uh, but also I'll be off for a while, but I don't want to have any breaks in this channel because I know some of you really do enjoy having me here with you every Wednesday, so I'm making this short video uh, and, and I shall leave it scheduled uh, to continue here keeping you company. Now, as you know, one of the most recent and important discoveries in uh, European archaeology and in relation to pre-Christian religious beliefs in Scandinavia and the Germanic world was announced recently, quite recently, a runic inscription about the god Odin and referring to the cult of that same deity. Uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of it, surely, especially those who are into Scandinavian and Nordic studies in relation to pre-Christian religions and belief systems. Well, uh, a team from the National Museum of Denmark, uh, led by renologist L L Lisbeth Immer, uh, recently announced uh, the discovery of the oldest reference to the cult of the god Odin. It is a bracteate found in Denmark in 2020, actually, uh, containing the runic inscription he is Odin's man. And then we have the representation of a person, uh, a portrait on the bracteate itself of an unknown king or overlord whose name, or perhaps a better a nickname in this case, uh, may have been Yaga or Yagos. Uh, as you know, uh, just for context, bracteates were medallions that were used as pendants and uh, adornment by the Germanic aristocracy during the period of migrations. The object has been dated to the 5th century of the Common Era, obviously, being 150 years older than the oldest reference to the god Wotan, or Odin, uh, which was a, a brooch found in present-day Germany. The bracteate was discovered in the village of Vindelu in central Jutland, uh, Jutland uh, the Danish mainland part of the country, uh, of course. However, uh, what I want to tell you is that I am happy to see this object that confirms what I have been saying for some years now in my videos, uh, that the swastika in Iron Age Scandinavia became eventually a symbol associated with the god Odin. Therefore, this object is also important for this reason, uh, so much so because uh, it is an objective and clear evidence that the image of knights or human figures on horseback, horse riders, uh, that appear on the bracteates are really representations of the god Wotan, or Odin, or representation of, of the, the overlords, chieftains, or kings incorporating this image of Odin as a god associated with nobility, something which generated a lot of controversy among academics until quite recently. But also because it is the first concrete reference relating the swastika symbol dire directly, <laughs> sorry, directly to the god Odin, confirming the research that I and a few other researchers, of course, have done. Um, I've said this in the past many times, uh, that the swastika became a symbol associated with Odin in Iron Age Scandinavia and the Nordic Middle Ages, at least in the continent. Uh, there is evidence, uh, mostly in runestones and churches, largely in an 11th century Christian context, that the swastika was associated with the god Odin, but the evidences have never been this direct and clear. And for this very reason, this recent finding finally proves much more clearly the association of the swastika with the god Odin in Scandinavia. And that's one of the reasons I'm happy, because my past research and uh, others' research, uh, research um, involving this context and this symbology have proven to be right. As I said, the evidences were there, but it was really hard to expose something more clear and direct, more concrete. But here it is. This finding couldn't be more direct. I haven't spoken about the swastika in great detail in this channel, only here and there in some videos, 
not yet, uh, at least, but the, in, in more depth, uh, especially concerning its arrival and use in the RNH uh, Germanic context. I plan on doing it in the future, surely. Uh, just have to gather more sources and finish the research, but first I will finish other research works that I feel like they are priority. But, well, the swastika was an ancient symbol of Asian origins, uh, which entered Scandinavia via Roman influence when Germanic warriors acted as mercenaries in their armies, in the Roman armies, as well as, of course, other symbols related to the Scandinavian warrior aristocracy, such as the eagle. As an animal symbol, which is an animal symbol we see present in some Old Norse uh, myths, and it is directly influenced through the contact with the Romans. And for this very reason, it makes perfect sense for this symbol, the swastika, to not only be present in an object that was used by the aristocracy, the Germanic aristocracy, but also associated with the god himself, the god Odin, venerated by the aristocracy, precisely, thus remaining associated in the Nordic medieval era, still both with the god Odin as god of the aristocracy and now, in this period, the early Nordic Middle Ages, Odin became be becoming the, the father of the gods, the king of the gods, the old father, but also associated, the swastika, also associated with Christ as a solar deity, whose figure, attributes and religious myths were also merged with the figure of Odin, especially in medieval Icelandic literature. And I take the opportunity to briefly express something concerning other details in this finding, because as one patron of mine asked, uh, concerning the, the arm ring under the swastika and what may be its meaning and association with the swastika symbol itself uh, in this context, and also a question concerning the rune text itself, if some of the runes constitute bind runes or just runes close together. Well, um, the arm ring was a notoriously famous symbol of the aristocracy of Iron Age Western Europe mostly. We see this quite a lot among the Lusitanians, uh, Celtiberians and G the Galicians, uh, especially the Iron Age Western Iberian gold arm rings and torques as well as the Lusitanian warrior statues. Uh, the use of arm rings and torques were for the members of the aristocracy, usually chieftains, kings, nobles, overlords, someone clearly in power, a member of the elite. We see the same pattern in Iron Age Scandinavia. So this object, this bracteate, not only was used by someone of aristocracy, but it also shows several signs of that social environment. The man on, on a horse is both Odin and both the representation of the elite, the very chieftain or king, whose name we know or to, be, uh, to, to either be Yaga or Yagas or Yahas. And in, in this bracteate, we see a close parallel, I think, with the 7th century Tengelgorda stone of Gotland, which contains the motif of the nobleman or the king or chieftain or Odin on horseback and the subjects following hold rings in their hands. It could, could be indeed such a case of arm rings or oath rings. Uh, the latter were of bigger proportions to serve as objects of devotion, even ex votos uh, towards a deity. Curiously, the arm ring in this bracteate, or what appears to be so, follows more the design of Western Iberian Iron Age arm rings and torques. Concerning the runes, uh, it may just be a case of close together, they are close together. If we look closely, and of course uh, it would be better to look at the object in real life and, and not from a picture, but indeed we notice pretty well, I think, that the text was also written without spaces between the words or um, indeed an attempt to bind the runes to save space and write it all down. However, there are cases in which bind runes serve as a, serve a magical purpose, as magical symbols, or a purpose of devotion, offering, etc. It may not be this case here in particular in this bracteate, and simply to save space and write it all down, as we see in later periods in runic inscriptions and literary sources, texts using the runes in medieval Iceland, where the use of bind runes was quite common and indeed to save space and write it all in the same line. But cases such as the Kaohul 
spear show evidences of bind runes that were not meant to be text or binding some letters of a word to form sentences, but to become magical symbols. Uh, in the sense of binding ideas or binding meanings or binding characters and symbols of each letter or even binding letters which either their sound or their letter value convey an idea. And these very specific bind runes in these particular contexts do have a magical religious expression and not just for writing. But I don't think this is the case on this particular bracket, but it happens in other bracteates, mind you, uh, such is the example of the 5th century Andle bracteate of Anglo-Saxon context, early uh, Anglo-Saxon context, which is a fine example of also containing bind runes as magical symbols and not bind runes to facilitate writing text confined to the space limits of the object. But those examples stay for another time. Anyway, um, well... It is a wonderful finding, this Vindelo Bracteate uh, from Denmark. Uh, I'm happy with this finding, both as an object that confirms past research, but also because it is always fascinating getting to know more about the cultural, historical past of humanity. My dear friends, uh, a very brief moment to keep you company. I must go now and try to schedule more videos. Schedule, schedule, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Well, uh, if you want to help, no one is forcing you to. Only if you want to help out uh, on, the, on the research, join the community at my Patreon. Your support is obviously greatly appreciated. I mean, I would never know about the Patreon platform if it wasn't for you. Many of you literally asked me to, to be there so you could help. So, and of course, uh, if you can uh, help other people, wonderful researchers out there who are doing an amazing work. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> See you on the next video. And as always, thanks for today. Until we meet again, my dear friends. Let's fly! My planet needs me! Do 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 do